Good morning. Yesterday we arrived back from Baku and today I have to try to head into London to grab a top hat and tails for Ascot because we're in the royal enclosure tomorrow. And it's currently half 11, 12 o'clock. So I'm not sure if I'm going to achieve this because it's a very specific look that you need. You have to have a top hat, you have to have a morning suit, which is a certain cut style jacket. And to get one on hire would mean they also need to tailor it by the end of the day and they need to get into London to do so. So I am cutting it fine to say the least. And if I can't get this outfit, they won't let me in because it's a strict dress code. So I need to get cracking. I'm heading down to London. Since we've landed, it really has been hitting the road running. So as you can hear, I'm a little bit out of breath because I've just been running around the house trying to get everything sorted before I leave for the day. And there's just a million and one things to do. But it's all good because when I'm busy, I'm my most productive. So I am going to jump in the car, head down to London and fingers crossed, come back with a outfit. So we've arrived to Oliver Brown ahead of Royal Ascot. Great little spot to come and do any rentals before the big day. Let's go and see what they've got inside. They have all of the Ascot attire in here. Oh, let bring you a bit closer. Well, how are we? I am, as you can see, back in the office. Nice little trip to London. It wasn't actually too bad. It's quite hot, so the tube was a little bit stuffy, but I managed to walk away with a morning suit. So I went to a shop called Oliver Brown, and as the gentleman that looked after me said, we're gonna punish you today. <laughs> and um, they charged me for two days because of my late notice. But I want to just put this out there. It wasn't my choice to be going in late. I only found out about this on Thursday last week and we had the Billie Eilish concert on Friday. I had a friend's wedding on Saturday. Saturday night we flew to Vancouver and we arrived back at like, must be like half eight, nine o'clock on Tuesday evening. So I only had Wednesday to go anyway. I had to miss my hair appointment, which let's be honest, I don't really need my hair cut do I? And you also have to wear a top hat in the royal enclosure. So. Another reason why it really doesn't matter that I miss my haircut, but I went in and I feel very lucky that they had my sizes and they had to do no alterations. He put this jacket on me and the sleeve length was perfect. The only downside, and I do think this would have just been in general with most rentals, even if I had given a little bit more notice, is that the fabric and the materials that are being used are, they're not light fabrics, they're quite heavy and at the moment the UK is having a heat wave and um, by the way in my other video I said that summer had officially started absolute nonsense it definitely hasn't because I got a reminder that it starts in a week um, when this video goes out that day will be different um, but yes I um, it probably will be summer when this video goes out but I got that wrong but anyway back to the rental so Oliver Brown essentially managed to kit me out with a double-breasted blue waistcoat, a morning jacket and top hat and also trousers. So it's going to be a little bit hot but I do remember when I went with long jeans about four or five years ago we were the first year that Ascot allowed people to take their top hats off during the day because it was so hot and a friend of mine went on um, Monday or Tuesday this week, I can't remember which one it was, it must have been Tuesday and he said that they were allowed to take their hats off when they sat down and some other times. Fingers crossed we get a little bit of flexibility whilst we're there because as much as we love the um, hot British weather, when you're wearing a three-piece suit and it's like a thick wool, um, it can be a little bit uncomfortable. So <laughs> I will be uh, hopefully finding some air conned rooms and I think Vince and I will probably leave tomorrow at about 9.30 a.m. Of course, I will show you my full outfit. I'd need to pair together my own shirt, tie and shoes. So we'll uh, go through the look tomorrow, but it is very Ascot, very classic attire that you'd expect to see because they are relatively strict on the Royal Enclosure. If you go into Ascot races without being in the Royal Enclosure, then they're a lot more relaxed. So you can just wear a nice suit. You don't have to wear a hat and there isn't restrictions on colours and stuff like that. So it is an ascot in general, 
it's only the royal enclosure where they're particularly strict so i am really looking forward to it because it's been a few years since i've been i also do want to plan a trip there with my friends perhaps next year when just a group of us go and uh, we just get on the champagne and watch the races and just make a good day of it because some of my friends are over in Ascot and that kind of way. So they tend to go most years anyway. I just tend to get really busy this time of year, so I always put it off, but I do need to make a point of going. And um, I am pleased that we're gonna be going tomorrow, Lid tonight, it should be a lovely day. On my way back from London, I got the email that I've been waiting for for a long time. I don't know if you remember, I sent off my two lenses and camera to get repaired in Milton Keynes in Wex. And the guys are fantastic, they sent them off. Um, Sony charge you per item for a consultation and then if you go ahead with the repair they knock it off. I was really happy with the general service. It was a bit slow, understandable. They're completely stacked with work so they explained it you know, quite early on and so I was expecting it. But there was one shocker and I was so shocked when I went back to collect this today. I had two lenses that were in completely fine working order. They just had dust in the inside of the lens and I had one camera body that had water damage. So the camera body was like over a thousand pounds because they had to give me a refurbed camera body, absolutely fine. The other lens was 140 pounds to clean the dust off, absolutely fine. And then the lens that shocked me was this little bad boy charged me 850 pounds to clean the lens, which is almost the price of the lens. <laughs> it's just extortionate for cleaning some dust off of a lens, but they assured me that a lot of work would have gone into doing it. So I actually haven't looked at this yet. And you'll be pleased to hear that there is still dust on the inside of this lens. That is shocking, Sony. 850 quid and you didn't even clean it properly. Wow. We'll be calling them in the morning. Well, no I won't. I'll be calling them on Friday because <laughs> I think they're closed now. But we got one lens. Two lens. And apparently a refurbed body. But until we take a look, we don't know what we're going to get, do we? I'm really disappointed that that's what they've sent me back. Let's see how this one is. A thousand pound I spent and there's just shit on these lenses. It's outrageous. I don't know if you're gonna see, clearly. So, that's that lens. And I don't know if you can see there either on the inside. It's really hard to see, I'm sure. That 850 quid gets you um, half a job, apparently. Wow. Anyway, let's have a look at the camera. I love they sent me back my old camera. As well. There you go, sir. There's your old crap back. But it's definitely not my old camera. It definitely feels like it's in good condition. So far that looks very promising. Happy with that. That was a thousand pound well spent. I'll, um, I'll definitely say that for sure. So we're back up and running, full equipment. Um, I, of course, went to Baku, Azerbaijan, without my lenses, which were greatly missed. Where else have we been? It's been, it's been a while. Since we got back from the Maldives, as soon as we got back, I took my camera equipment in and my laptop in for them to have a look at, and uh, I've only just got them back. So it's been a bit of a wait, and, I'm going to be sending those lenses back again, <laughs> but anyway, 
great news on the morning zoo. I'm actually really chuffed that that's arrived because it means I can actually attend Ascot tomorrow, which is going to be a great day. I also received a lovely gift from the Tom Ford Beauty PR team. It's a new fragrance for him. Exquisite signature scents make the perfect gift. So I'm assuming this is a Father's Day link. You can see here. I like the Tom Ford packaging, it's nice. I'm actually gonna do a quick picture for the ground. One. Two. I have a sneaky feeling that these are gonna be the same and my dad received two lovely bottles of fragrances already, one from Boss and one from Carolina Herrera. I'm gonna give this to my stepdad because I'm sure he'll appreciate a nice fragrance. So let's take a look and see what Tom Ford fragrance it is. Ooh, lovely. Ombre leather. I absolutely love this fragrance. It's not Lydia's favorite fragrance of mine. I think that she finds it quite overpowering, but whenever I go out with the lads, this is one of the fragrances that I always take away with me because A, I know that Lydia would prefer I didn't wear it around her. Um, and so I love it a lot and I get lots of compliments when I wear it. So I tend to just wear it when we're not going out for a date or whatever together, or I'm not gonna be at home with her. I pick ones that she does like and I wear this when I'm going out without her. Now, thank you very much to the Tom Ford team. I am going to clean my desk up and I think I'm gonna jump into the lounge and spend a little bit of time with the boys and lids because we haven't been at home, as you know, for the past few days because we were at the wedding and we went to Baku and so we need to give the boys some TLC. But there's been a lot of drama going on at home, by the way. There's been a deer that's been entering the garden and I haven't been and witnessed any of it myself. Like yesterday evening, I ran out and the deer was standing on our patio and it looked at me and then I started walking towards it and it ran off. But Lydia said it had its feet in, in the house. And um, today when I was in London, Lydia was showing me a video. I'll actually show you. So here it is, Porter v Deer. No, no, ah, no, no. Wouldn't it be amazing if one day we had a deer that chilled and played with the boys? That would be incredible. Porter doesn't do anything. He just barks. He's all noise. It's the same with the couriers and delivery guys. He just literally just barks and barks and barks. If we can get Porter to relax a little bit. I think the deer is quite tame and I think it's very inquisitive. It doesn't tend to do anything. I don't know if any of you have heard of any stories of monk jacks being aggressive towards dogs. He went up to Barkley when he came into the house and like sniffed Barkley's nose and then kind of like touched a bit and Barkley just squealed. Um, and so if the boys get comfortable and the deer doesn't give up with their behaviors, then perhaps we could have um, a little dog and deer integration going on at home. But I know that we are in the season of baby deer, so it could be that the mother is being protective and is trying to establish territory or trying to scare the boys off when they go too close to somewhere where they're nesting or living. There could be lots of things. So we're just keeping an eye on it and we're keeping the boys in a little bit more than we do normally just to uh, make sure that we can be around them. When they're outside, I don't feel too concerned about their safety. Um, but it would be good to be on hand um, should we need to be. So Lids has uh, been spending quite a bit of time out there with them today and that's when that happens. So very interesting, lots of drama, but hopefully it could turn out to be good and uh, we get a deer visitor because I just think they're absolutely beautiful. They're lovely creatures. And a long time ago, I managed to capture one on the grass that came quite close to the house and they're just amazing creatures. So, and it's just so hard to see them as well because they're so quiet and they're so spooked. They normally just run away if you're like 50 meters from them. Um, around here that is, I know that if you were to go to certain areas of the UK, they're very tame, but here they're, they're super on edge. So yeah, it'd be nice to uh, have them here a little bit more regularly. Tweedle Dean, Tweedle Dumb out there. Right boys, what have you got? What? <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh, I didn't even see you there. Having a little read. I'm gonna have my KBK. I'm gonna come and sit on here. Garden's looking nice, isn't it? Hydrangea Annabelle's lifting. See there. Greenhouse area looking nice. One of my honeybees. Pollination right there, my friends. Right. We've got a whole new order of KBKs come in. Well, what are our choices today? So we've got rice, cumin, chicken, carrot, raisin, and bulgur wheat salad. It's a long one, isn't it? King prawn tikka masala, pulled pork risotto, a fennel and herb chicken with tomato butter bean. Oh, that sounds nice. I think I'm gonna have that. Lovely job. You can see the wasps on the chair here. They come and take the wood off to make their nests with it. The hornets come down sometimes as well, I think. That is a wasp at work right there. Speaking of hornets, there's one going into its home. Puppy time. Potty time. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time they've ever seen a paraglider. Oh, there's another one. Yeah. There's two. Yeah, there's I, I can't believe it. Beautiful start to the day. The birds are singing. What's this little man doing? Morning boys. Good morning. You had fun with Grandad last night. Well here is my Royal Ascot attire hung up, ready to go. So as you can see I've got the very traditional trousers. I wish I knew what these were called. But they've got the stripe pattern down them with the adjusters on the side. And then I lucked out with a double breasted blue and cream waistcoat which is really lovely um, looks like there's a little bit of a mark on it in the middle but I'm sure that we can uh, hide that like so actually no we can't it will be visible but oh well and then this is my brand new shirt from Dooley and Brostron it's got a double cuff which is very important for when you're going into the royal enclosure and I've got my Tiffany cufflinks from my wedding day in them which I think are absolutely class very timeless and then this is my tails you can see a mandatory requirement for the royal enclosure and then i've got my top hat and i'm yet to decide on the tie i've picked a few out just down there with the paisley print and also a plain one and i've also got some sunglasses because it's going to be hot and sunny today so that's my look we're gonna get this dressed and i'll show you it on and there we have it guys i am dressed up ready to go i'm wearing a rented suit from oliver brown as you know which included the tails the double-breasted waistcoat the trousers and the top hat i've actually got my wedding tie on from st crispin bespoke it's a ivy color with the old paisley design on it i've got my made to measure shirt from Dooley and rostron on which fits an absolute treat my cufflinks are also my wedding cufflinks from tiffany and co and my shoes today are from boss so our car has just arrived outside i'm feeling extremely british and uh, we're going to jump in the car and embark on what i think is quite a lengthy journey down to ascot i think it takes over a couple of hours but i could have that wrong so i might undress a little bit for the journey um, but this is the full look complete we're probably about half an hour but in distance probably only a mile away from the entrance at Ascot you can see the uh, party goers are starting early today at the Royal Forsters Oh. 
Royal Ascot. Welcome to part of the Royal Enclosure. We've just stopped off at the Lavazza bar here for a quick iced latte at a soy one, very lovely. And the ladies are just having a little wander. We're gonna take a look around the space because it's absolutely huge here, as you can see. We have Her Majesty's official guests over here. And in a second, we're gonna make our way over to the main building where we will um, possibly sit down for some lunch. We're gonna have a look at a few spots. You can see they've got lots of different hospitality areas here. So we need to decide where we want to have some food. And then the races start at 2.30 today. So we're gonna get busy creating some content because Lydia's doing a Instagram takeover for the Vatsa. And then the races will start and we'll go with the flow from there. Well, at Royal Ascot, there's no exceptions. That is the cutest thing I've ever seen. He's got his own little top hat on. That is Ascot Ladies' Day. Day three of the race is over and we are just about to depart. It's been an absolute scorcher of a day. Still managed to keep my top hat on though. We are back in the car and I have got undressed. Lid is working on posting a little Ascot memory on our stories. So I just got myself into a white t-shirt, nice and comfortable. It was extremely hot today, but I do enjoy getting dressed up in the top hand tails. Um, it's just so British and it looks so classy. I did manage to put a couple of bets on, but the Wi-Fi and the signal at Ascot, I'm assuming because of the large numbers of individuals that were actually using it, um, just wasn't there. So I managed to put one on before we arrived and that placed third and had each way so I think I did okay and the second one uh, we did a what can't we call it a double it's not called a double we bet on first and second place so it's like a dual bet and we got second and third in the right order so we were so close um, but nonetheless all part of the fun and we enjoyed a couple of drinks and we did some work, created some stories, Lydia did a takeover for La Bazza. We enjoyed some beautiful coffee and... God, that coffee was... It was nice, wasn't it? So yeah, good. I never, had ever. iced latte and yeah, I had with a... soya. And you had a... Iced latte with soya. soya. And at the end I went and had another one. Yeah. Um, they were really nice. Oh my gosh, I never finished coffees and yeah. I literally finished that whole thing. Yeah. It was so nice. It was good. Very 
very nice. Drinking Stroffy. Stroffy? <laughs> Another Stroffy. Come, if you, if you go and order a Stroffy, what I was trying to say was we were drinking a coffee with a straw. Yeah. It came out wrong. I feel like the vats need to make a Stroffy. Yeah, a Stroffy, which is a straw coffee. Yeah. Um, good for the teeth, apparently. Stop staining. Yes. <laughs> but anyway, we, um, yeah, we enjoyed a couple of coffees and we did lots of work and I feel like the takeover was a success. Yeah, it was really good. So, we are probably about an hour or so from home. Looking forward to getting back to the boys. And then tomorrow, um, I have a little bit of work to do in the morning and it's supposed to be an absolute scorch, like in the 30s. 32 degrees. Is it 32? Yeah. Tomorrow I've got a bit of work and then I think we'll spend a little bit of time in the garden. Um, I need to go and check on the bees as well, so I'll do that. But I won't vlog it. I'm just going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I shall probably speak to you in the morning. Well, it's not every day that we get weather like this, so Lids and I are making full use of it and we're spending a little bit of time this afternoon out in the garden. I'm just sitting on my phone. Lids is sitting reading a book. You can tell who the sophisticated one is out of the two. <laughs> it's an absolutely stunning day. We've actually just had some new plants arrive for this bed because I'm not sure if I mentioned, but it got flooded and lots of them died. This is what it should have looked like. This bed's doing really well. Nice and full. We'll get there. What are you doing, my darling? Last bits of what? Bits and pieces. Yeah. Lovely. Which ones are the bits and which ones are the pieces? These are the bits. Yeah. Those ones there are the pieces. Oh, you've done those already. Are yeah. they your pumpkins? They're pumpkins. Yeah. Um, Just over there. I think I'm going to put my strawberries outside because they don't appear to be doing that well. Do you think they're getting too dry or because it's he they're... heating them up too quickly? Just... They need lots of water, do you know? Yeah, they do. Also, your vines, are you supposed to like help train them up? Yes, but I can't do that. I need you oh. to do it. We should have said. Because I don't know unless you ask. Yeah, because I don't, I don't um, like touching them because they have cobwebs on them. <laughs> okay. I love that you have it set up out here at all times. Yes, I'm actually going to take the, ta the plate and tables, the, the plate yeah. and cutlery inside now. Yeah, because um, it'd be nice to have them the... inside. Huh? It'd be nice to have them inside. Yeah. These are doing alright. Yeah, these are cucumbers, there's loads yeah. on them. Yeah. You can take that heater out now because it just... You don't like it? No, it's okay. Okay. <sighs> yeah, we've got tomatoes. Yep, here. And cucumbers. Yeah, very good. I'll have a look at my bees quickly. They're doing quite well this side yeah, as well, aren't they? Baby cucumbers, and I've been pollinating them myself by using a makeup brush. Oh right, yeah. Cucumber. Is that what you have to do? You have to cross pollinate. Them. Well, you get more fruit. I wish I'd done it with the lemon trees. I think that's my biggest regret. I forgot what Ali told me, and how she go because the trees are in the greenhouse. There's less opportunity for them to be um, pollinated. Pollinated. So you do it yourself. And it, you basically get loads and loads of fruit if you do that. Ah, cheat the system. Yeah, I didn't do it. Do it next time. Yeah, I know. I've still got a few, but I just wish I had more because I want to make more cakes. Yes. Uh, you get out of there, little man. They're freshly planted. These two absolutely love going in the thick grass out the back. <laughs> We're letting this go wild. And um, it was doing amazingly, and these two have just absolutely flattened it. <laughs> yeah, haven't they? Yeah. They've just flattened it. He's ever so happy in there though, isn't he? I know, they love it. They're getting rid of all of the pollen on his schnook. Yeah. Have you noticed that these are much greener. Have, have done much better down the bottom? I wonder if it's because the water's water dri running, yeah. more enough water. Yeah, and these are a little bit dry. Although those might have been better trees. Do you remember they put those in oh, right. last? Oh right, okay. It's lovely out today, isn't it? Oh, it's turned out wonderful. Yeah. Asparagus now being left until next season, by the way. So we'll have asparagus from the house, which will be wonderful. And I'm going to ask all of the questions when we go on our trip, because they have asparagus. Oh, of course, yeah, to get all the tips. Yeah, that's Lovely. 
Well, I am going to just stick my nose in the beehive, see how they're getting on today. I'm not gonna open it, I'm just gonna look through the um, through the sides to see if, there, if there's any action in the super, because there's still no action in the uh, honey super, which is just the way it is. So we'll keep an eye on it and uh, we'll see how they go. Obviously, priority the bees, and uh, as long as they've got honey stores in the brood box, that's the main focus, which they actually have. They've got two frames worth, or two and a half frames worth. So they're absolutely fine, but I'm hoping that they're gonna try and expand their colony size, clear out the frames in the brood box, and then stick the honey at the top, um, and then start filling all of those up when they realize they can use them. So we'll see, time will tell. But I am going to wrap this video up. We'll start vlogging again this week because um, we've got some really exciting stuff going on this week. I think that it, warrants a new start to a vlog so i hope you have enjoyed this video as always i'll leave you here barkley chewing stones barkley there's just no stopping him he's relentless so as i was saying i hope you have enjoyed this video i'll leave the details to all of the relevance in the description box below and i shall be seeing you next wednesday 5 p.m take care peace